All right, so we've got uh, the first uh, big assignment, the final assignment for the topic one, which is about model sheets. Eventually, we're going to animate, starting next week, we're going to animate and create a, a full uh, animated project. We'll have lessons on that, and then a big final project on that. Topic two will be an animated film. Uh, so before that, uh, we're going to create a model sheet for our animation, our, our little movie. Uh, so, if you go over to the web design folder inside there, you'll see CIS 126. Uh, you want to uh, copy, we'll look at it in a moment, but you want to <coughs> copy that PDF topic one assignment. Uh, you want to copy that to your desktop or flash drive. I turn the printers off for the moment. You'll be able to print it out in a moment. We'll look at that second. First, what I want to look at, if you also want to copy that whole folder, which is called Topic 1 Digital Drawing D Model Sheets. It's, it's a little bit large, but copy that folder to your uh, desktop so you can look at it. Remember, if you try to look at files just in that network folder, it may slow down for everyone. So copy that over. And basically, this topic, once you get Topic 1 folder, model sheet and the assignment, these two relate. We'll look at what's inside the folder first. When you uh, watch any animation, uh, there has to be consistency. There's lots of people that work on an animation, usually, especially the, the bigger ones. So if 20 people are animating something, everything needs to be consistent. The character needs to look consistent from scene to scene, from day to day that they work on it, from the 20 animators that are working on it. That's what a model sheet is. It's a way to define a character or a location in, a, in the film uh, or, or like the weapons or the clothing. It's a way to define uh, the project so that everyone is on the same page. I've got here then examples of six kinds of model sheets. The best way to explain what a model sheet is is to look at them, and you've probably seen examples. Let's look at the first one here, the turnaround model sheet. It's got 15 examples that I found along uh, around the web. So there's this character. This is a turnaround model sheet. This is another one. This is another one. This is another one. You get the idea that this is a character that is being turned around. We're seeing the different sides of the character, full frontal, profile, back view, because we need to define these characters to be able to animate them. So eventually, again, for next month, the big idea will be you're going to make an animation. And so this step is you're going to define your character. You can do more than one character, of course. You can make it as hard on yourself as you want. But I will uh, have some basic minimums. So, just various variety of turnaround characters. This is three angles, full frontal, profile, three-quarter view. And kind of simpler compared to that one, but still valid. And it just goes on and it shows different examples. The turnaround model sheet. Uh, so, like this one's drawn in blue pencil. The other ones are digital. Uh, full frontal, three-quarters, profile, back turning around so you can see all aspects. If we go back and we look at the second one, the expression model sheet. This is a type of model sheet that focuses on the expressions of the character. So here's this kangaroo character. He's got various expressions, devious, angry, confused, font on the head. It's not an expression, but result. And next one, something like that too. Um, so a different kind of character, like you can already get a sense this character seems to be fast because of these angles in the face and next, etc. So all of these are focused on various expressions of a character, emotions. So you see a variety of styles. There's one over here that I chose, uh, this one. This one's interesting because it's a very simple character. It's uh, a robot or something, and a knight. Uh, a knight, and he's got the helmet on, 
and that the helmet has no expression, it's a piece of metal. But all the expression is in two little eyes, two little circles, and look at how you get that, uh, that kind of expression and from above, and uh, cynical, well, a little tilt of the head, and that kind of expression, and happy or whatever. So you can still do expressions on very simple kinds of characters like this. Steve the Crazy Terrapin. And just uh, complexity. This one's a rather realistic one, but then you get some of these more cartoony expressions. That's pretty realistic, 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 very cartoony. Notice the distortion in the face for effect. This may show up for like half a second to really get the point across, whereas the rest of the time the character is realistic. So those are some expressions. Expression model sheet. Pose model sheets. So uh, various uh, poses of the character, standing normally, sitting down, normal walk, uh, kind of a run. So the point of all of this, if I was in a team animating a, a little, uh, if I was animating a project with a team, um, me and two other people, we all need to draw the character the same way all the time or else it'll look weird. My style is different from your style, but our style needs to be the same in a project. So here we know when this character runs, her hands are back like that, like Naruto. But if you were then making the hands moving like this, then it would not be uh, the on. It would not be on model. It would be breaking the rules. Let's see what else. So just different poses. So all of these. How does the character look doing different things? about um, the 12 principles and one of them is appeal. Uh, you can draw characters in any style you want but they should also be interesting. And let's see next one color model sheet. This one focuses on defining the colors of, of the character and there's a bunch of different ways from examples that I showed here. So here we've got Felinka and this character's colors are defined like this, just little blobs of color that show <coughs> this color is that color. Some of these model sheets have the color formula spelled out. But here's another one, Astrid and Soke Hair. It's got to be this color of blue, not whatever color, but this color, so that it's consistent in the project. Uh, another example. There was one over here. This one's also defined. Uh, with uh, the color uh, formula. So when you pick colors in, in Animate or most software, it can define the color as an RGB formula or as a hex color, hexadecimal color. And it'll show you the color formula right there in Animate. This might be good to, I would recommend doing it this way once you get to this point. So just put the little blob of color, put the formula there because sometimes that's going to be a faster way for you to get that color in some other program instead of getting the eyedropper or clicking the color. It's a formula that you can quickly type in. And it goes on to some other examples, colors. It's the color model sheet. Description, the purpose of this one is to um, it's visual but also and it's, I guess it's hard to read here but if you look at it, you'll see descriptions about, well, be sure to do this and make sure that happens. And when you're on this pose, use this and that. So it's also explaining what the uh, what you should do in the project. Let's see other ones here. So look at this one. Uh, hair is in constant cycle of growth and loss, usually bald. So 
is that? Normally very expressive, can hide his emotions fairly well if he feels the need to. Plain t-shirt, usually no pattern. So you're getting a point across there that if you're going to animate this character, it's going to have plain t-shirts. No crazy designs or anything. Although things can change up. Button-down shirts sometimes with a tie. Just other examples there. And comparison. If you are going to make a project with more than one character in the animation, a comparison model sheet might be a good one to go for, where it compares the other characters in your animation. Sim simply like that. So, uh, anyone, uh, anyone understand Portuguese? Nope, Portuguese. So, Primero Minister, I think that's Prime Minister, Senior or Senor, Leader, uh, probably Leader of the Opposition. So the Prime Minister, the other guy, the common guy, Jorge. And they're compared right there. The, it's funny there, the most powerful person in this animation, the Prime Minister, is also the shortest. That has a meaning there as well. So that's how they compare. The common person standing tall, and then the politicians, the shorter ones. Another example here. So when you have these characters, Lowenstein, Lowenstein is going to be this little compared to everyone else. Other examples where they compare. Not too complex. Notice most or many of them are in color. Some of them are, are in black and white. You will have that option. You don't have to do color on everything, but we'll get to the requirements in a moment. And going back to the last one. Um, this one's an example of one that is kind of complete in that it has a turnaround model sheet for the same character. It has an expression model sheet for that character, and it has the pose model sheet for that character. So I just grouped those. There's no complete model sheet. I just grouped them together to show you this is kind of what you're going to do. Seven is the example where you're going to need to do something like this. And we'll see the requirements in just a moment. We start, that. We start those today, right? We're going to start it today. Lastly, if you want more inspiration, famous, I just took a bunch of famous uh, model sheets that I kind of found around the web and such. Uh, Animaniacs, Powerpuff Girls, etc. You can find these all the time, Adventure Time model sheets, etc. And they're there for you to compare from the official studios. You know, this is anyone like Animaniacs? Well, there's the comparison between all the characters. 1992, 25 years ago. Samurai Pizza Cats, there's how they compare. Their heights and all of that. Tiny Toon Adventures, etc. So I have their uh, the first folders are examples of people, regular people that have created these model sheets that I got off online. And then these final ones are official examples. Here's a Donald Duck one. Um, I don't see a date on it, but it's probably pretty old. And this one's got various expressions and poses. So they've got also this is also this this one's a mixture. It's a it's an expression model sheet. It's a pose model sheet, and it's a description model sheet. They also say your blouse can be handled loosely for effect. Usually it's straight, but sometimes it can be supple. Lastly, oh, two more things. So you can go look at those links in the text file to get more information. And then you've got also, which will come in more handy later, a walking animation guide. We don't need to worry about this one just yet, but I wanted to give it to you now because we we're going to animate. We're going to do walking animations, which is actually one of the hardest things to animate. So I wanted to start to show you this uh, early on before we get into real animation. So those are just a bunch of examples to give you an idea of what you can do. Any general questions on any of those?
examples. <coughs> Let's look then at the actual assignment. You also needed to look at or copy the PDF file. Let's open that one up. Topic one, assignment. The printer's off at the moment. I'll turn them back on in a bit. Uh, but here's our first topic. So a little bit of uh, explanation, which I already kind of talked about. And then you will develop a character for a future project. It can be a funny animal character like Bugs Bunny, a realistic anime character like Spike Spiegel, or anything in between. You have no limit on the creation, but you must follow the requirements below. It must also be your own original idea, not a character that already exists. So you have to create something new. It can be based on other characters, but it should be new, so that you don't get sued by the creators. The setup is that you're going to create a folder, because you're going to create three files, at least. So you're going to make a folder for yourself, put your name on it, your last name, topic one. In Animate, you'll create a new project, a new file in HTML5 Canvas. Change those dimensions. I haven't explicitly hammered home how to change the size of your project, but uh, try to figure that on your own. If you can't figure it out, call me over. But you need to change the size of your project that it's HD size, 1920 by 1080, HD size. After you complete the requirements below, you're going to then export this as a PNG file. So a ping 24, as we've been doing before, a, a high quality ping file. Print and submit by the deadline. And jumping down here, the deadline is Wednesday, March 1st, 1 p.m., when I walk out the room. You can turn it in early, of course. The actual requirements are you must create one turnaround model sheet for your character. It can be in color or not. So the, the turnaround one is the one that is required. Remember the examples up on the wall over there. CIS 126 examples, look at what previous students have done. The turnaround model sheet is the required one. At least three uh, sides of the character, right? Full frontal, uh, side profile, back. You could do that. You could do uh, full frontal, you could do three quarter view, you could do profile view. You could do more. You can do every single turnaround of the character if, if you want. Color or not. It can be all in black and white if you want. You can take the time to color it too. Then you can then you have to pick two more other types of model sheets based on the other ones left over. There was expressions, poses, colors, description, and comparison, which are those folders right there. Expressions, pose, colors, description, comparison create one of each of another one. Don't do two more expressions. You need one expression and one else. Definitely a turnaround and then one of these other ones, like a color description or something. So three separate files. You're going to have three separate files in your folder. One for each type of the model sheet. Save them all in your folder. You're going to print them all out on separate sheets of paper in color. We have the color printers. I think they're all working now. You can print them at home or elsewhere. Extra credit. Write a two-paragraph document about the character, like their origin, their life story, anything you want to say, any story or explanation about the character you just drew to give me some insight about it. Print it and attach it to your model sheet, and you can earn up to two more points. That's 20% of a regular assignment. You will be graded on your ability to apply the concepts we've learned this month on an original character of your own creation. So if you just redo an existing, if you do your own model sheet of Tom and Jerry, that's not what I'm looking for. You have to make your own mouse and cat character. If you don't apply any of the techniques we talked about, like maybe using the pen tablet, using the colorization that we talked about with gradients and all of that, you're not applying what we're learning. Uh, that might hurt you. 
And uh, again, if you didn't follow these other things, like the size of the document, if you kept it the default size, that's going to hurt you. So these requirements, everything that I've mentioned up here, these are things you'll be graded on. I, of course, it's hard to grade on the subjectivity of your character about how good it is, quote unquote, whatever that means. And I'll try not to grade on that. I'll try just to focus on the mechanical aspects of what you've done. Uh, you know, it's not really an art class, so I can't grade you on art. Um, and then, so this is worth 25 points. It's two and a half assignments. It is due by 1 p.m. Wednesday, March 1st, in color. No late work accepted. So you have today, you have four days to work on it. You have today in class. Wednesday will be completely a lab day. And you have your time outside of class. We have lab time. We've got probably like literally 20 hours of lab time from now until Wednesday. My math might be bad on that, Angie. You're probably not going to be here 20 hours, right? <laughs> but we're going to have a lot of lab time. You can come in and work. Tablets and everything. We have lab until 8 o'clock tonight, same as tomorrow. And then <coughs> Wednesday, um, end of class or end of the day? End of the, end of the class, 1 p.m. Okay. So, yeah, there's the morning lab at um, 9 before class. Mm. Yeah, so just about 20 hours or so of... Uh, Lab time. So if you don't have the software, uh, you know, I, I feel for you. Uh, but we've got a lot of lab time to work. I, as soon as I'm done talking, it'll be lab time. And again, you can decide, well, I'll do this at home uh, at my own leisure and such. Great. Just mind the deadline. I'll be here. Angie will be here. If more people come to, to help, we'll be here to help. Any general questions on the first big assignment? I've recorded all the lectures, remember. If you need to get a refresher on anything, go back to the, to the videos. Um, and you can check them out.